Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at the sine, cosines, and tangents. And we're going to be looking to see how those three ratios relate to the unit circle. So we're going to start, to talk, start with our conversation now about the unit circle. In the next few lessons, we're going to be dealing a lot with the unit circle. So you want to make sure that you understand the basics that we're going to be talking about today. Now to get us started, the, if you look in the book, they, don't, they really kind of jump to conclusions as far as what you should already know. But I want to make sure that we understand some of the basics. So let's start with looking at the phrase so katoa. You might recall hearing that before. So is the ratio of the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine or ka would be the cosine equals the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And lastly, the tangent is equal, equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Now, to understand some more about this, now these three trigonometric ratios only relate to right triangles. So with the right triangle here, just review the parts of a right triangle. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Then if we're looking for an angle, the opposite leg and the adjacent leg will change depending on what leg or what angle we're looking for. So if I'm looking for this angle here that's in the bottom left-hand corner of the triangle, the opposite leg would then be the leg that's opposite that angle. And the adjacent leg would be the side of the angle that makes up the actual angle. So if you look at that angle, it's made up of two sides, one side being the hypotenuse. The other side is going to be the adjacent leg. Now let's say if I had changed the angle. Let's say if instead of looking at... Uh, the angle in the bottom left corner, I'd be looking at the angle in the top, uh, at the top there. Now the, op the hypotenuse is going gonna, is gonna to stay the same, but the opposite leg and the adjacent leg are going to change. Because now the opposite leg is going to be the side across from the angle, so that's going to be my opposite leg. And my adjacent leg now is going to be on the other side. It's going to be the side, like I said, that makes up the angle. But uh, like I said, the opposite leg the adjacent leg will change depending on what um, angle we're looking at, where the hypotenuse will always stay the same. Now, how does that relate to the unit circle? Well, here we have a unit circle, and every point on that unit circle has a coordinate, an x and a y. And those coordinates, x and y, relate to the sine and the cosine of our angles. Now, how does that all work together? Well, let's look more closely at, the, at this unit circle and see how we could use the sine and the cosine to figure out what the coordinate of any point on that unit circle would be. Well, like I just said, the, uh, each coordinate has an x and a y. So this point here that was at the coordinate 1, 0 has been rotated to this new location. We want to figure out, well, how can I figure out what that new location would be? Well, what we could do is we could do, draw a right triangle like they've done. And the radius of that triangle is going to be the, or I'm sorry, the radius of the circle is going to be the same as the hypotenuse, which is going to be one unit because it's a unit circle. And this length down here is going to be x because that's going to be our distance that that point travels along the x-axis. And this side over here be our y because that represents how far up that point is or the distance on the y-axis. So if I have a right triangle, we can use uh, SOHCAHTOA. So let's say if I'm trying to figure out what my value for x would be. Well, to find out what x is, it would be since the um, value for x here is adjacent to the angle that we're looking for. And so it, since it's adjacent, we're going to use, and we, have, we know the hypotenuse, so we're going to use the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse, which would be the cosine. So the cosine of the angle would give us the, would be equal to the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse, which is 1. Or another way to look at it is cosine of the, cosine of the angle would give us x. Now to find the y value of our angle, well, that's this side over here. And that side is opposite the angle. And so we can use the angle, or so we can use the ratio that would give us the opposite over the hypotenuse, which would be the sine. So the sine of an angle equals our y value divided by the hypotenuse. Well, y divided by 1 is just y. So in other words, to find y would be equal to the sine of the angle. So to find the x value, we always take the cosine of the angle 
To find the y value, we always take the sine of the angle. That's what that big idea, that's what that box is referring to. So let's look at some examples here. Let's look at this first example. For example, A, it says find the coordinates of a point. It should read find the coordinates of a point 1, 0 under rotation of 22 degrees about the origin. So that means that it's been moved 22 degrees. So we've got to figure out, well, with that rotation, what would the new coordinate be? Well, all you've got to do is we have to just take the cosine of 22 and the sine of 22 will give us our x and the y. Now to do this on our calculator, the first thing is you want to make sure that your calculator right now is in uh, degree mode. So if we go to the home, if we go to settings, you want to just make sure that where it says angle here that it's in degree mode. And go to a calculator. Don't use a scratch pad. Go to a calculator. And to access the cosine, if you look over here next to the 7, the, the trig button will give us all these different trig functions. So we're going to look at the cosine of the angle. And so we're just going to type in, since it's already in degree mode, I'm just going to two, or type in cosine of 22, hit enter, and I get 0.927. So my x value is 0.927. To find the y value, we're going to click again on that trig button and use the sine of 22. Again, it's in degrees, so we can just type it in as sine of 22. And we get 0.375 if we round it to the nearest thousandths. So there's your coordinates. So under rotation 22 degrees, 0 0.10 would now be at the point 0.927 and 0.375. Now let's look at B. It says find the coordinates of 1, 0 for a rotation of 90 degrees. That's what that means. The capital R represents the word rotation, so this is just a rotation of 90 degrees. Well, rotation of 90 degrees brings us up here. So that's actually the coordinate where x is 0, y is 1. That's not too bad. Didn't need our calculator for that. We don't need our calculator for the next one either. It says find the coordinates for a rotation of pi. Because this is referring to something that's in radians. And if you think about when we're dealing with radians, on the unit circle, 2 pi is all the way around the circle. So that means that pi would be halfway around the circle, or 180 degrees, which brings us to this point, which is the coordinate negative 1, 0. Now here's another key point that we need to talk about. To figure out what the tangent is in relation to the unit circle, the tangent is always going to be the sine of an angle divided by the cosine of an angle. Now, the key, though, is that the cosine of the angle can't equal 0. Because when the cosine does equal 0, which occurs at any odd multiple of 90 degrees, the tangent of the angle is undefined. Well, first off, what are the odd multiples of 90? Well, the odd multiples of 90, well, the first one would just be 90 degrees. An easy way to figure that out is 1 times 90 would be 90. So the first multiple of an odd multiple of 90 would be 90 degrees. 180 degrees, 2 times 90 degrees, that's an even multiple because you're using the second multiple. 2 times 90 is 180. So to figure out the next odd multiple, we would use 3. 3 times 90 is 270 degrees. And then we would skip 4. And the fifth, or the next odd multiple would be the fifth one. 5 times 90 is 450 degrees. And the seventh one would be 630, or this, um, the next one would be 7 times 90, which would give you 630 degrees, and so on. So to find the next one, I would take 9 times 90, and the next one would be 11 times 90, and so on. So here are your odd multiples of 90. Now, why is it that it's going to be undefined? Well, let's look at the first one of 90 degrees. That's where, remember, the cosine is your x value, and the sine is the y value. Well, here, the cosine, uh, if the cosine is 0, and the, so it's the sine of the angle over the cosine of the angle. So for this one, the sine of the angle would be 1, and the cosine of the angle is 0. Well, you can't divide by 0, so that's why it's undefined at 90 degrees. And it's going to be undefined at any multiple of 90, because, like we said, the next multiple of 90 would be down here at 270 degrees, and that's a coordinate where x is 0, y is negative 1. So this one, the sine of the angle would be negative 1 divided by 0. Well, it's not possible, so you can't have that one. So it, could be, it would be undefined. So let's look at some of these, though. Let's look at the tangent of pi. We just talked about pi. The tangent of pi is going to be the sine of pi over the cosine of pi. 
So then that would end up being, so the pi, sine of pi, again, we just found that to be 0, and the cosine of pi is negative 1. 0 divided by 1, uh, 0 divided by negative 1 would be 0. So the tangent of pi is 0. The tangent of negative 270, now recall from the previous video that if it's a negative degree rotation, that means we're going um, clockwise. So negative 270 brings you all the way up to the same as 90 degrees, which if you notice, that is an odd multiple of 90. So this one would be undefined. The tangent of 450 is also one that we talked about as being an odd multiple of 90, so that's also going to be undefined. And the tangent of negative 4 pi, um, again, what we talked about yesterday with radians, 2 pi would be one full rotation, so negative 2 pi would be one full rotation in the, negative, or in the clockwise direction, so negative 4 pi would be another one, bringing us back to the point uh, 1, 0. So then to find the tangent of negative 4 pi, that's going to be the sine of negative 4 pi over the cosine of negative 4 pi. And the sine of negative 4 pi would be 0. The cosine of negative 4 pi would be 1. So giving us 0 as our answer. You might wonder, is it always going to be 0 or undefined for the tangent of a number? No, it's just because we're looking at just the four uh, points where the unit circle hits our x or y axis for right now. In a future lesson, we're going to look at other points on the unit circle to so be able to see how we can use the sine over cosine to find those. Well, we're actually going to stop this video here after now introducing this idea of the sine, cosine, and tangent. In the next video, you're going to be looking at how we can apply these different uh, ratios to be able to solve some different uh, story problems in some different situations. So go ahead and watch that next video now so you can see, like I said, how to apply these different rules that we just talked about.